worship, Pastor Sam and Sister Arlene. My senior pastor's name is Sister Arlene. That's her name. And so, uh, you know, it's easy to remember. And uh, thank you for the gracious hospitality and for the welcome to share your pulpit with me. And I get to share the word and I deeply appreciate your ministry here and the Lord is using you. Uh, is it okay to have the volume a little bit lower? I feel it's a little bit loud. Um, just just want to say thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the ministry. And you are touching so many people. And we just heard from uh, Brother Vijay. And uh, he wanted me to say hello to you. And I know he's watching us. And also, I want to uh, bring... I also want to enjoy to have Brother Shiva and Sister... Uh, Sheetal, and for your love, for your friendship, for your hospitality, last night he came. I know he stays far, but he came. So he can just drop me five minutes away from the airport, you know. But he came, took me out for a wonderful meal. And uh, sister, honestly, when I saw you, I did not recognize you for a moment. You dropped your age by 20 years. In that outfit, you know. And for a minute I said, is that Sister Sheetal? Then I looked, had to look a second and third. Yes, it is, sister. Brother, your wife is getting younger. Amen. A brother stays young. She's getting younger. He stays young. Let's put it that way. But thank you. And your daughter was playing the shofar. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see the rest of the children. And also Richard and Diana Stracy uh, bring greetings from this, them as well. You have a beautiful church. You know, you do not know the value of just being in a good, wonderful, Pentecostal, spiritual church. I want you to know this morning, Sister Arlene and the team, the entire worship team, got to transport us to the very presence of God. Amen? Now, I travel. My ministry takes me globally, different parts of the world. And sometimes people come to the worship service thinking they can sing a few songs from Elevation or Bethel or Hillsong, and they do the job. What I call it is a copy and a paste. You just copy it and you paste it, starting to end. No, that's not worship. That's performance, amen? Sister Arlene, you blessed me today. And I, more than me, you blessed the heart of God. And thank you. Thank you for... I want you to put your hands together for the worship team. Would you do that? I was so blessed just worshiping God this morning, amen? Hallelujah. I bring greetings from my church, the New Life Assembly. We have few things in common. It's the New Life AG Church, and you have an AG. All right, Amazing Grace, AG. Thank you. We have things in common right there. And I also bring greetings from my senior pastor, Sister Arlene Stubbs. And I've been part of the church. In fact, in the next two weeks' time, I finished 32 years as a pastor there. I must have started when I was in LKG or something. I mean... I, I, I'm kind of 32 right now in my mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. I bring greetings from the Next Gen Commission of the World Assembly of God Fellowship. I serve as co-chairman handling global operations for the children and youth ministry. And wherever we go, we get to challenge people on uh, why we need to invest in young people and children. And also I bring greetings from my dear wife, my wife Julie. We've been married over 25 years. Again, must be from LKG something. <laughs> and, uh, and my three boys, my eldest son, he's working. My second one is in university. The third one is just in 12th grade. And uh, uh, back home, we would have right now finished about maybe four services. We have two more to go. And uh, we have six services, uh, close to 6,000 people are coming there on a Sunday. And God is, we baptize. 16 people last Sunday. And this is wonderful. Every time we look at what God is doing, I want you to know, you are the church. Can you say amen? amen. Turn to your neighbor, point at them and say, you are the church. And the book of Hebrews says, we are his house. He is building us. Amen. You know, we take a lot of effort in building our home. We want the furniture. We want the sofas. We want all the stuff to be there at the right place. And we are very concerned about how our house looks. He is very concerned how we look. And I don't mean the makeup. What I mean is he wants to see how you look, how you develop inside of you. 
your character, your personality, your temperament, you're becoming more and more like Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I already started preaching. Let's, let's look to God in prayer. Father God, this morning, I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Sam and Sister Arlene, wonderful gifts from heaven to this place. God Almighty, anoint them afresh. Use them, increase the borders of their ministry. Bring in souls, oh God, from the north and the south and the east and the west. Bring in people they can shepherd and train and equip, oh God. I pray that you bring in people they will release into the ministry. Father, we thank you. I pray everyone that comes here will be joyful. Everyone that comes here, oh God, will, will expect great things from God and will want to listen to the teaching and go back changed, oh God. Father, we thank you. I pray for the time of sharing the word. I pray that you would bless the ministry of the word this morning to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. I have one request. My message today, I'm speaking about modeling our marriage after the Trinity. In fact, I would have not given the title. I would have kind of let it evolve, but then... It's already out there on social media. This is what I want to do. Uh, if you are not, if your spouse is here and you are busy, maybe catering or ushering or you happen to sit somewhere, is it okay for you to sit by, beside your spouse? Is it okay? Yes. All right. If your husband or wife is not beside you and they're in the house, this is the time for you to go and sit because my message is for husbands and wives. I presume everybody's sitting with your spouse, Right? Amen? Yeah. Unless they're outside shopping or, you know. All right. I heard the story of a lady from India that came to Dubai on a holiday. And uh, she came with the rest of the few ladies, of friends of hers. And when she was coming to uh, Dubai, she told her husband, listen, I'm going to uh, Dubai for this holiday and I so deserve it, and I've been working so hard. But I want to go with all my friends. I want you to take care of my special cat. I have this cat. I love my cat very much. You know I love it. Please take care of my cat. And, uh, and my mother is here. Please take care of my mom. And so the lady went. When she came here, she was just amazed at the place. She had great time shopping. She went to some of the malls. She went to. Sh she forgot to call her husband. She forgot to call the husband the next day. She was so busy with her friends, the third day she called her husband. And by now, the husband, you can imagine, he's quite upset. Well, she called the third day and said, Hey, how are you doing? I'm so sorry I missed calling you. I got so excited with shopping and traveling with my friends and food. I forgot. Uh, how are you? And say, Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And they talk for a while and they say, Well, how's my cat doing? And the man said, your cat died. Oh, my goodness. She said, what? He said, your cat died. He said, and she started crying so badly. She said, how can you be so rude? How can, I mean, why aren't you sensitive? He said, what's the problem? He says, your cat died. I told you cat died. <coughs> he said, but you should have broken the news gradually to me. You shouldn't have said it like your cat died. You should have said the cat has gone up to the roof. And the next day when I called, you should have said the cat slipped. And the third day you should have told me the cat died. Oh, you're such an insensitive man. And she started crying and crying and crying. After a few minutes, she said, well, how's my mother doing? And he said, he paused for a while. He said, your mother has just gone up the roof. You know, I'm just returning back from Bucharest in Romania. We had global leaders there. A uh, number of nations were represented. The church, the Assemblies of God in Romania has been officially recognized by the government. And we had government officials there. And I was speaking a couple of sessions and uh, had a wonderful time. And I want you to know wherever I travel, one of the things I see is the generation that we are in, we are so busy. This is a very busy generation because dads are working, moms are working, and kids are being raised by another parent. 
It's a mobile parent. Mobile parent don't mean moving around. This one. You know, and, and the sad thing is today, kids come home, even the parents are addicted to this. So parents don't see eye to eye with children. They are on the, and the kids say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. And then they, they're still with this. Both the parents and the children are on this. Remember the story of uh, a mom fixing dinner and then she's texting everybody in the house, in the rooms. Hey, come, come to the dining room. We're going to have supper. That's how people are being called in the house. Heard the story of a young man who was very sick, a teenager. And the mother took him to the hospital, to the doctor. And the doctor did all kinds of tests and said, well, I don't see anything is wrong with this boy. Uh, what he needs is to play some sports. He should play some football or basketball or something like that. And he looked at the boy and says, boy, do you play football? He said, yes, doctor, I do. He says, well, how long do you play? He says, until my battery lasts. Until my battery lasts. In Judges chapter 2, verse 10 says, and after that, a whole generation had been gathered to their fathers. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. I want you to know, your young people, their faith, their Christian life, their devotion is, is caught than taught. Hello. I'm saying something. Young people in your home, their faith, their devotion, their love for the Lord is caught than taught. You can tell them to have quiet time, but they need to see you having the quiet time. You can tell them to worship the Lord. They want to see you worship the Lord. They, you can tell them to go to church, but they want to see you go to church. They, they, you know, a lot of time we tell them, but we don't do it. And I'm going to talk this morning to families. When I look at the Western world, the young people are devastated. They are lonely. They're depressed. They're anxious. Why? Because they're growing up in a home. I'm not talking about Dubai. A lot of the countries overseas, other countries I've seen, where parents are not together anymore. Husbands and wives are not together anymore. And the kids that are growing up in Christian homes do not want the God of the Father, do not want the scripture of the Father, do not want the church of the Father, do not want the worship of the Father. And you're living in a land here, and the people of the land, the kids are growing up strong. The Muslim friends, those young people, they want the God of their fathers. They want the scripture of the father. They want the, the uh, worship place of the father. They want the love for the prophet or love for... Are you getting what I'm trying to say? There is a big disconnect between our kind of group and the people of this land. And I, I feel we need to go back and revisit what's going wrong. We need to revisit. If you don't revisit, let, let me tell you these friends, you're here in Dubai and you're in a very wealthy nation. Some of you are very wealthy. Some of you make a lot of money, more than you need. May I say this? It will be a tragedy for you to have all the money and lose your children. If your children do not walk with God, that would be an utter failure for you. I have three boys. 23, 21, and 16. It will break my heart if my kids don't walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. It will break my heart if my kids don't walk with God. All my three kids, they love Jesus. And I pray that in all that you do, in all the professional growth and success that you have, that you would not have lost the most precious things that you have, that is your children in your home. A strong church consists of strong families. And here at Amazing Grace, we need strong families. God is interested in families. God instituted the family before the government. The family survived the flood. The family has top priority in God's eyes. Jesus performed his first miracle in a family function. There's a lot the Bible has to say about family. 
There's a unique scripture I came across and this is very, very interesting. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1. Jeremiah 31 1. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all families of Israel and they will be my people. In nowhere in the Bible we find something like that where God says he is the God of all the families. I will be the God of all the families. Now youth want to be part of a good family. Our youth want dad and mom to be in love with each other. We need to model Christ likeness in our home. You know, I'm going to say this to you. If your husband thinks, ladies, if your husband thinks you're a good believer, you are. Men, if your wife thinks you're a good Christian, you are. Did I say something too harsh? Because our raw nature, our unadulterated nature is exposed in the house. Is revealed in the house. Your husband, your wife knows who you really are. <coughs> Sorry. Unfortunately, in the Bible, we do not have many couples, many families we can model after. Can you think of some families we can model after? Can we model after Adam and Eve? No. We don't want our sisters to go and bite the apple again. They can buy the apple, don't bite the apple. Do you want to follow Noah? No, he got drunk. And when his son saw it, he cursed his grandson. Can you believe it? Do you want to follow Abraham and Sarah? No. You don't want your wife to say, hey, go have children through somebody else. Do you want to follow David? No, we don't want some men to walk up the terrace and watch something else. Do you want to follow Eli the priest? No, Eli was a successful priest but failed as a parent. David was a successful king but he failed as a parent. The Bible says the husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. For the wife, the scripture says, wives obey your husbands as unto the Lord. For a couple, we do not have a pattern to follow. So the question is, who shall we imitate? And I want to throw this idea to you. Let's model our marriage after the Trinity. Now you'll say, Pastor, why the Trinity? I mean, they're not a married couple. Why do you say the Trinity? But before I go into this, let me ask you about what is your understanding of the Trinity? Is it okay? When you look at Trinity, what do you understand? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many gods we worship? Okay. So let me ask you a question. Is the Trinity like me? I'm the son to my father. I'm the husband to my wife. And I'm the father to my children. So I'm the son, the husband, and the father in one person. Is that how the Trinity is? How many of you say yes? Come on. Come on, lift your hand. If you say yes, okay. How many say the Trinity is like the egg? There's a shell, there's a white, there's a yolk. Pastor, do we need interpretation to Arabic or no? They understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. Is the Trinity like Water, water in the essence, and when you freeze it, it's ice. When you boil it, it's vapor. So water, ice, and vapor. Is that how Trinity is? Tell me, yes. How many say, I didn't understand one word you said? You understood it? But why is it that most of you are not raising your hand? How is the Trinity then? Three persons, three separate persons, and they are one, one in essence. How many of you say that is how it is? Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to understand. 
I want you to know the illustration of me as a son, as a husband and a father is the wrong illustration. Why? Someday when I leave this planet, all three offices go. When I die, the son, the husband and the father dies. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross, God was not dead. Is it, is it clear? Yeah. God was not dead. God the son died on the cross. The father and the Holy Spirit was, are you getting me? The illustration of the ice and water and vapor is not the right illustration. Why? Yes, when one essence is there, the others are not there. Are you getting me? That's right. It's not even the egg, shell, no. Now the question is, the teaching of the Trinity. Now, I know theologians, I know there's a Bible college here, so I'm not going to go into the professor. They can come and meet with you, pastor. The, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. We sing the song, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says, let us make man in our image and let them rule. Right there in Genesis, before man came into existence, God is saying, let us. The Bible is never confused about the Trinity. There's no confusion in the entire Holy Bible about the concept of the Trinity. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image. God didn't say, let me make man in my image. It's our image. Plurality, more than one person. Jesus prayed to the Father. He didn't just go and mutter something to himself. Have you seen ladies when they're in the kitchen, they just mutter, I don't know where, I don't know where is he gone. Have you seen that? No, Jesus was not muttering to himself. Early in the morning, he went to a lonely place to commune with the Father. Jesus said, if I go, I will send the paracleta, someone of the same spirit, the comforter, and he will come. You know, there's one place in the Bible where we find the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost at the same time, at the same place. Where is it? Absolutely. At the baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The Son is getting baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove and the voice of the Father comes from heaven. Now the question is, if they are three, how are they one? We talked about that he prays two and he says, I will send. How, how are they one? Because a lot of Muslim friends always talk that you serve three gods. No, sir, we don't. We serve one God revealed in three persons. One God. Deuteronomy chapter six, please. Deuteronomy chapter six and verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. Now, the, the, the beautiful illustration that you can find is actually in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. That is where the revelation of the Trinity lies. Genesis 2, 24, it says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave to the wife, and they will become one flesh. Everybody say one flesh. How many couples here? Let me see. How many couples? You're, you're married. You're a couple here. I, I want a young couple to come up to the front. Anybody willing? I want to illustrate something. I will not embarrass you. Anybody who want to come up? Just volunteer. Ah, come over. You're a brave couple. Come over. Please tell me your names. Karen, Karen and? Oliver. Oliver? <coughs> Sorry. How long have you been married? Come, come, come here. Six years? Do you have kids? Yes. How many? Amariah. One? Yes. Don't stop. <laughs> Don't stop. Amen. We need amazing grace to grow and you have to contribute to that growth. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, let me say... The Bible says a man will leave his father and mother, cleave to the wife, and they will become one. It didn't say one family. It didn't say one family. It says one 
flesh. Now question, how many flesh do you see? How many flesh do you see? Two. How many flesh does God see? I want you to understand something. The only, listen to me, the only image of the unity in the Trinity is in a married couple on earth. The only image. Now the word one flesh, the word for one is the word ekad. Everybody say ekad. E-C-H-A-D, ekad. It's the same word. Can you go back to Deuteronomy 6, please? Deuteronomy 6. Yeah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is ekad. It's the same word used there. It is the same word used in Deuteronomy 6 for God. Is the same word used for a couple in Genesis 2.24. The two is ekad. One flesh. That is why in the book of Malachi, or Malachi, it says, I hate divorce, says the Lord. I hate divorce, says the Lord. That's a very strong word. Why does the Bible say I hate it? Because you destroy the image of the triune God on earth. You destroy the image of the... You cannot go and tell people God is one. This is the image. Amen? Thank you very much. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you sir. Yes. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay, it's on. All right, I'm back to business here. Now, is, is that clear? Is that clear about the Lord our God is? Ekhad. And the two shall become? Ekhad. Is the same word. Is it, is it clear? Right there in Genesis chapter 2 and in Deuteronomy, Moses is mentioning the uniqueness of our theology. Now, I want to talk about what can we imitate. You know, the Bible says in, uh, do not break covenant with the wife of your youth. In Malachi it says, don't separate from each other. Once you make a covenant, don't follow what comes on the news. What, don't follow things on, on, on television programs and the movies where somebody is with somebody's wife and they go to somebody else and they go to, don't live like animals. Hello, don't live like animals. You made a covenant with God, I want you to hold it. If you trust the scripture, if you follow the word, I want you to hold on to the covenant you made with your wife and with your husband. Don't feel like, well, if they don't take care of me, I'm just walking out. There are reasons to separate. I'm not saying that you cannot separate, but there are legitimate reasons. You cannot separate for every reason. Few things I want you to imitate, okay? Number one, I want you to imitate their praise for each other. Now, when you look at the Trinity, and I, in, the, in the marriage circles, I want you to learn to praise each other. You know, after the service, I pray the husband will go, hold the wife's hand and say, hey, sweetheart, I love you. Now, she may get a heart attack. She didn't hear that for the last 15 years. But that's all right, amen? Make sure your health insurance is in place and you say that. Now, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Imitate their praise for each other. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out, out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now, let me ask you, did Jesus know that God the Father loved him? Did he have any doubt? Why did God the Father had to publicly do that in front of everybody? For the world to know? But look at how he says, this is my son, no doubt about it. This is my beloved son, whom I, I love. 
I love him. Are you getting me? Father is saying, this is my beloved son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I remember baptizing my son in water and I said this. I said, this is my, this is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased and I baptized. I got to baptize all my three boys. Amen. Yeah. Listen to me. Friends, husbands, you need to be verbal. You need to appreciate your wives. You know, wives do a lot of work. I appreciate my wife deeply. I do. We've been married 25 years. We're aiming for another 25 and then we'll, you know. By the way, 25 anniversary was in March this year. My wife agreed to continue 25 more. <laughs> oh, happy day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, learn to appreciate. A lot of times we take each other for granted. I, I have something I want to say. Marriage is the strongest of all relationships. Everybody says strongest. It's the deepest of all relationships. Say deepest. But it is also the most breakable of all relationships. I say breakable. It is strongest. It is the highest. It is the deepest. But it is the most breakable. You don't break from your father. You don't break from your sibling. You don't break from your uncle. You don't break from others. But people break from their spouse. Two people coming from two different homes in a holy matrimony has the highest of all human relationship. There is no other relationship higher than a married couple. Not between a father and daughter. Not between a son and a mother. Are you getting me? It is the highest. It is also the strongest. The strongest bond is not between father and daughter and son and mom or sibling. It is not strongest. We have siblings, we go apart, they get married, they go. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've been just recovering from a... It is the highest, it is the strongest, it is the most deepest. It's the most intimate of all relationships. You are never intimate with anybody else like you're intimately known with your spouse. Are you getting me? Strongest, highest, deepest, and yet it is the most breakable. It's very fragile. If you know how fragile your marriage is, you need to handle it not only with care, but also with prayer. Don't take your marriage for granted. Don't ever say, I can do what I want to do and she's going to be with me. No, sir. She may not separate from you, but she'll go to her dad's home for peace of mind. Please, don't take each other for granted. I want to verbally express your love. Ladies, men have needs. One of the greatest needs for your husband is respect. If he can be respected, and how does a man interpret respect? By the way you talk to him. By the way you talk to him. Some women say, Yo, they go gada gaya. They look at this fellow. Koi kaam ko gini, koi bakwas baat nahi. Don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. Always keep him in high esteem. You submit to your husband as to the Lord. The way you would deal with Jesus Christ, you deal with your man. Please, I encourage you, don't take this for granted. Don't say things. And if you hurt each other, can you go and reconcile soon? Let's imitate their praise for each other. Learn to praise each other. Learn to say, if you have a good meal, tell them, hey, the food was good. Heard the story of a young lady who got married, never experienced, never cooked, okay, before. So she was cooking and she, she didn't take the gravel out, the stones, you know. She just cooked and she, this was the first time cooking and she's married. And she wanted to impress her husband. So she cooked and she was had the chicken curry and the other, all the stuff, sambar, and whatever. Some had a little extra salt, some had a little chili, it's okay. But she was trying her best to impress her husband. Well, the husband was in love with her for a while. And so the food came in. The first morsel he took, he bit a stone. It kind of gets to a nerve. 
second no problem third he bit again and the wife looked and said uh, honey uh, uh, are there stones in the rice he says no 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 there is rice here and there <laughs> you know it's very important to know how you respond to your spouse are you getting me everything that comes into your mind it doesn't have to come out of your mouth hello it's very important to know that you learn to zip up don't have to say <clears throat> if you are a successful couple you have learned the art of fighting well how many of you married more than 25 years lift your hands you married more than 25 years let me ask you a question how many of you have fought with each other in the 25 years all of you yes. you know why you are successful because you have also experienced defeat in your marriage in your fights you learn the art of accepting defeat you know i am successfully married because i have lost few arguments the ones who have won the fight listen listen to me the ones who are successfully married have lost many fights the ones who have successfully won the fights are not together you can choose to either win the fight or win the battle you have to choose which one some people are so foolish they will win the fight they will lose the battle they will lose the battle now which couple does not fight yes we fight amen fight the bible says fight a good fight of faith and i fight with my wife listen to me i i preached a message in my church it's on youtube it's called love at first fight <laughs> love at first fight so in your marriage learn to know what to say but if you can make it a goal in your life that you will say things positive you will appreciate you will learn things to appreciate listen what are things wives want to hear they want to hear words of appreciation they want to hear words of encouragement they want to hear words that tell her hey you look beautiful you look great that sari looks great on you women love to hear that by the way ladies don't go to your husband and say oh i love you very much you're very nice no talk words of respect to him say i appreciate you as a man i'm proud of you you are committed to the family I I am proud to be your wife. The words words you tell a husband are words of respect. Men words you tell a wife are words of romance and love. We learn to communicate. We learn to appreciate. So let me ask you, are you willing to appreciate each other? Can you do that right now? Just hold your husband's or wife's hand, look to each other and listen. If you don't want to say it loud just go close to the ear and say something nice. Now listen don't say something nasty. <laughs> say something nice. In the house of God the preacher is asking you to say something nice. Amen. Will you do that? Yes. Yeah. You done? Yes. Some of them are still talking pastor. It's good. It's good. Some of them starting talking for the first time. <laughs> Hallelujah. imitate their praise for each other i think my time is getting over okay all right is it okay till we go to lunch time 1 o'clock <laughs> my son came to me one time and he said daddy when i get married i want to have a wife like mommy has the quality of mommy and he said something so daddy some day when i get married i want to have a marriage like yours That was the highest compliment I received from somebody who sees me 24/7. Number 2, imitate their partnership. I want you to see John chapter 5 verse 19 20 21. Jesus gave them the answer, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. for the father loves the son and shows him all that he does yes and he will show him even greater things than these so that you will be amazed for just as the father hello listen 
Just as the father raises the dead. Now question, where did the father raise the dead? Just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give. It says in John 4, 20, uh, 34, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to do his will. John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Listen, can you see the partnership they have? They are not in competition. Jesus is saying, well, well, Father did everything in the Old Testament. I'm going to show what I can do in the New Testament. I'm going to do far greater. And the Holy Spirit is going to go, Father, Son did that part. I'm going to do even greater. No, you're not in competition. You're complimenting each other. If your wife has a better salary than yours, praise God. You can afford a better car. Wife will give the money. Amen. If the wife, listen to me, whatever you do, you compliment each other. I have couples that I know, the husband will spend for his side of expense, wife will spend of her side of expense. If they go to a restaurant, they split the bill. If they go a uh, tour somewhere, he pays for his ticket, she pay. I said, I said, why did they get married? <coughs> Why did they get married? By the way, it is the husband's responsibility, like we heard today, to protect and to provide. To provide. If the wife has an income, praise the Lord. She's not going to send everything to her father and mother. She is supposed to bring it to the marriage, to the house. If you're going to send something to your father and mother, talk to your husband. Don't do behind a papa lelo. Mat batana. Don't do things like that. Because, lady, your money is also his money. Man, her money is also your money. It's our money. Turn to your husband and say, it's our money. I, you know, my, my pastors, uh, my pastor, senior pastor, when my, my senior pastor is now with the Lord, his wife is now, she had this thing to, that she would say her, to her husband. She said, you know, everything you have is mine. And says, yes, 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 we are. And the husband, and she said, everything I have is still mine. <laughs> <laughs> Imitate their partnership. Listen, your partners work together. You're raising kids together. You're serving God together. You're fighting the battles together. Your greatest enemy is not your wife. It is the enemy outside. Amen. You're fighting together. You're praying together. You're working together. You're building the house together. Hallelujah. So question, in work, in worship, in witness, are you partners? Is your wife, is your husband your greatest partner? I'm blessed to have a wonderful partner. My wife. Number three, imitate their possessiveness for each other. Are you possessive of each other? Now, I mean in a healthy way. I'm not saying reading all the messages. Where did you go? Where you came? Who spoke to you? That is obnoxious. It's, it's kind of, it, it just kills a person. No, we're not talking about being controlling. We're talking about healthy possessiveness. You love your spouse, you, you, you love your husband, your wife. There is the protection, the possessiveness. Luke chapter 12 verse 10, beautiful verse. And everyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Look at the son of God, the possessiveness he has towards the Holy Spirit. He said, you talk about my younger brother, I will not spare you. You want to fight, fight me. Don't you ever touch. Are you, are you getting the, the possessiveness? Please understand, there should be a healthy possessiveness. You should protect. You should be possessive in a good sense. To say, hey, that's my man. I'm going to stand for him. Never speak against your man to anybody. Don't do that. 
Don't speak against your wife to anybody. Please don't expose things. They trust you and that's why they live with you. You know, one of the worst things in, in divorce is this. That you know so much about each other. That it's not just a legal separation. You can destroy that person completely. You know every strength and weakness. You know every, every fixed deposit, every pair places they have gone. They have even shared weaknesses to you. <coughs> How do I turn this off if I cough actually? Yeah, one second. Am I on? Okay. There should be a healthy possessiveness for each other. A possessiveness also means I know too much. You know something? You as a spouse know so much about your husband, about your wife, that if you were to open the mouth, the, what they ha- the other person need to do is just go and commit suicide. You know so much. You've trusted each other so much. Are you getting me? Yeah. Don't betray them. Even when things get sour, don't betray them. Don't hit them below the belt. Don't do things to be devastating and and get you. I want you to physically hold that person. Or you can put your arms around. It's perfectly fine. Will you have a moment to just pray? I want first of all, both of you pray for each other. I'm going to pray for you. In the light of what God has spoken to you and say, God, help me to be more Christ-like. Help me, Lord, to praise. Help me, Lord, to have a healthy partnership. Help me, Lord, that we will be having a godly good possessiveness of each other. That we will prefer each other and that we will have a passion for the world. I want you to pray for each other. Would you do that? Some of us, some of the marriages here need healing. You probably fought last last week and you've come to the house of God. I want you to pray that you will stop fighting in your marriage. Pray that there'll be more love. There'll be more understanding. Come on, will you just talk to each other and pray with each other? Don't stand quiet. Please pray with each other. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to call the worship team to please come. Today I come before you I pray for every couple in the house Even the ones that are here Lord Their spouses may not be here They may be at work Or back home in some country Lord I pray for every married person here Father I pray that we will consider this This institution sacred That Lord we made a covenant before God For better for worse For richer for poorer In sickness and in health To love and to cherish Until parted by death Father, the covenant that we made before you, that we will be faithful. When troubles come, Lord, help us, oh God, to learn to resolve conflicts. Learn to appreciate each other. Learn to prefer each other better than ourselves. Lord, I pray that we will not be selfish. We will learn, oh God, to be people that will serve God together as a family. I pray for every husband, every wife. Lord, bless them. Cover them with your precious blood. May Jesus be glorified in each of these marriages. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to leave a scripture. John 17 verse 11. Father, that they may be one as we are one. That's the Lord's prayer for us. That you will be one 
as he is one as they are one god bless you of the lord yes i love you with the love of the lord oh i see in you the glory of my king and i love you with the love of the lord yes i of God, please. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that song, Love the Lord. give you the glory oh father for the ministry of your word you're a god of families you are a god who loves your church you are coming to be married to your bride oh father god for the day of marriage remains oh father and marriage is what you instituted even before anyone or anyone could be there there was no other institution but marriage right from genesis down to the book of revelation is a book of marriage It's a book of association. It's a book of alignment. It's a book of being one. One mind. It's a book of being one spirit. It's a book of being one body in a marital relationship. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your servant who brought this word to us. That how we can model a marriage. in the ways of trinity we want to say thank you god lord as we have received your word i pray that we'll store your word in the bottom of our hearts that we'll appreciate our spouses we will love our spouses we will cherish nourish lord we will bless one another and be a blessing Oh Father the Lord every marriage will be lubricated with the oil of the Holy Spirit and every family will be functional by the power of the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord I pray that the marriages in the house of God will be oh Father full of the Spirit of God full of the knowledge of the Holy One of Israel and I pray that Christ will be alone glorified. Every family will be operational oh Lord and building the church of Jesus Christ. In the name of Yeshua you will be glorified and you will be magnified oh master the lord in every home you will be glorified every house will be a light house every house will be a house where gospel will be preached every house will be a house where the name of Yeshua will be glorified and will be lifted high and we thank you we bless you we appreciate you and we give you the glory 
Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day of reconciliation. Today is the day, O oh Father, that you will revive us. And today is the day that you will refresh your church and your people in the name of Jesus. I thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, O oh Father. We thank you for your servant. Lord, as he has come and ministered unto us, the Lord, I pray, O oh Father, that your anointing will multiply upon his life, upon his wife, upon his children, upon his marriage. His marriage is blessed, O oh Father. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you as he travels back that you will take him safely home. And Lord, that Christ will be exalted, O oh Father. We thank you. We praise you. And we bless your name. We give you all glory, Father. As your servant, I bless your church. Lord, with the Abrahamic covenantal blessing, I release your anointing of your blessing upon your people. In the name of Jesus, as Abraham was rich in faith, in cattle, in gold, and silver, so shall your people will be rich in every area of the living. In the name of the Lord, spiritually, physically, financially, materially, maritally, emotionally, O oh Father, that they will see the glory of God upon their life. So we thank you, we bless you, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing that song with the choir is singing before the benediction. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of his sweet Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore and all the saints of God said Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a big clap of